In this class, you'll need to cite your sources in APA style. There are lots of resources out there to help you cite sources in APA, and it's great to take advantage of those as long as you double check your results. Using citation generators that you find online, like the ones we see here, it's a great starting point, but these generators are not foolproof and they can leave you with citations that aren't quite right. It's always a good idea to double check any results you have with a resource that you can trust. I will walk you through that process in this video. If you're citing an article from a UNCG database, you can often get a citation right there from the article page. In this example, I'm using Academic Search Complete, a great database for finding articles on lots of different topics. In the right column under Tools, I'll click Cite and then scroll through until I see my APA citation, which I'll copy and paste into my Word document. You can see here that when I paste my citation, the formatting is definitely not correct. So I usually paste as plain text and then fix my citation from there. So paste and merge formatting in this case. So the first thing I notice that's a difference between my example and what I have here is that I don't have that hanging indent. It didn't paste in. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a hanging indent. So I know that I've got that formatting piece taken care of. I'm going to fix my citation from here. Next, I'm going to compare the actual content to a good example. There are two places that I really like to go for APA citation examples, the Owl at Purdue and Citation Fox. Today we'll use Citation Fox from the University at Albany. Citation Fox can help with citations in both APA and MLA, so double check that you're on the APA page. Then you can drill down to the specific type of source you have. So in our case, I know that I have a scholarly article, so it'll be under journal and periodical articles, scholarly journal articles, and I can tell from looking at the citation that I got from our database that it has a DOI. So I'm going to select online DOI. In our case, we just have one author, G.J. Michael. So I'm going to show example for one author for a scholarly article online with a DOI. So you're just trying to match the type of source you have with the examples that they have. My favorite method for checking citations is to have my generated citation up in a document and then have a good example up on the same screen so that I can compare. So in this case, as with many generated APA citations, the citation that came from the database has the incorrect article title format. So article titles in APA, in this case, Who's Afraid of WikiLeaks, Missed Opportunities in Political Science Research, the article title should be in sentence case. So that just means that you would capitalize anything that you would capitalize in a sentence and leave everything else lowercase. So I can see my example here from Citation Fox for political satire and postmodern irony in the age of Stephen Colbert and Jon Stewart. And I can look at my example and see what I need to change. So in my case, I need to lowercase the a in afraid. WikiLeaks would be considered a proper noun, so I'm going to leave that capitalized just like I would in a sentence. I've got a question mark right in the middle of my title, so I'm going to treat these two pieces of the citation like two separate sentences. The same also goes if you have an article title that has a colon or some other punctuation in the middle of it. So again, I'm going to keep the m capitalized because it's the beginning of a new sentence, and then I'm going to lowercase everything else. So in APA, again, all article titles should be written out like sentences, with only that first word and proper nouns being capitalized. The next thing that I'm going to do is start comparing a few more of these citation examples with what I have. So I can see that I've got my author, and it's in the correct format here. In APA, you'll have author last name, comma, first initial or first and middle initial. You'll have the date next then the title in that sentence case, and this is the title of the article. Next, we're going to have the title of the journal, and in our case, we can kind of see Word is prompting us here that of should not be capitalized. This whole piece does need to be in italics, and you'll see that in many of your examples above here, but unimportant words like of or and should be lowercase. So I'm good up to this point, and then I've got my string of numbers. 
In our case, 32 and 2 are the volume and the issue. And you can get that information back here on your article information page. So we've got the source information here with the date, volume, and issue number, as well as page range. So back on my example, and then again comparing it to what I have here, I have my journal title, comma, still in italics, we've got 32 for the volume, in parentheses, no longer in italics, we've got two for the issue, comma, page numbers, and then we have that DOI. A DOI is a digital object identifier, and it's a unique number for a particular article. If your article has one, you'll see it on the article page, or if you visit the full text of the article, you should see a DOI on the first page if one is included. If it's not included, you don't need to include it in your citation. One other resource that I really like when I'm trying to cite websites is from the APA style blog. And if you Google how to cite a website, APA, then you get, again, some things from these different generators, which could be useful. But I really like this one from the APA style blog, which I'll have linked on your research guide that says how to cite something you found on a website in APA style. This goes through lots of different types of sources that you may find online, and it gives you a general guideline to work from. It's going to be the same general information that you would have for a journal article. So you'll have your author, you'll have your date, you'll have a title, and then you have information about where you retrieved it from. Now, in certain cases, you would want to put a format description. In this case, they have a blog post example, but they also have examples of articles or websites with no authors listed or ones with no date identified. So there are a lot of different contingencies offered here. If you have questions about APA citations, you can always contact your librarian for this class or head to the library website, library.uncg.edu, and click chat with a librarian. Thanks for watching.